Welcome back to Deb Chanel's 48th World, where we read the Bible together, and we're talking about each passage or each chapter we're discussing in the Bible and reading. And please make sure you subscribe to my channel if you enjoy these videos, okay? We're going to go into Genesis chapter 24, verses 1 through... Sixty-six. Okay, that's Genesis chapter 24, 1 through 66. Let's get right on into it. We have Abraham was now old and well advanced in years. And the Lord said to the chief servant in his household, the one in charge of all that he had, put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heavens and the God of earth that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I am living but will go to my country and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac the servant asked him what if the woman is unwilling to come back with me to this land shall I then take your son back to the country you came from Make sure that you do not take my son back there, Abraham said. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land, and who spoke to me and promised me an oath, saying to your offspring, I will give this land. He will send his angels before you so that you can get a wife for my son from there. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from your oath or this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. So the servant put his hand on the thigh of his master, Abraham, and swore an oath to him concerning this matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and left taking with him all kinds of good things from his master. He said, set out for Aram, Naharim, and made his way to the town of Nahor. He had the camels kneel down near the well outside the town. It was towards evening, the time the women go out to draw water. Then he prayed, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, give me a success today and show kindness to my master's master Abraham. See, I am standing beside the spring, and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a girl, please let down your jar, that I may have a drink. And she says, drink, and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this, I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder she was the daughter of Beth, Beth, Bethu, son of Malachi, who was the wife of Abraham's brother Nahar. The girl was very beautiful, a virgin. No man had ever laid with her or lain with her. She went down to the spring, filled her jar, and came up again. The servant hurried to meet her and said, Please give me a little water from your jar. Drink, my lord, she said, and quickly lowered the jar, and she quickly, no, and quickly lowered the jar to her hands and gave him a drink. After she had given him a drink, she said, I'll draw water for your camels, too, until they had finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough, ran back to the well to draw more water, and drew enough for all his camels. Without saying a word, the man watched her closely to learn whether or not the Lord had made his journey successful. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took out a gold nose ring, wearing a beaker, and two gold bracelets, weighing ten shekels. Then she asked, Whose daughter are you? Then he asked, Whose daughter are you? Please tell me, is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She answered him, I am the daughter of Bethu the son of Malachi, uh, Malachi, bore to Nahar. And she added, We have plenty of straw and founder or fodder. 
as well as room for you to spend the night. Then the man bowed down and worshipped the Lord, saying, Praise be to the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his kindness and faithfulness to my master. As for me, the Lord has led me on the journey to the house of my master's relatives. The girl ran and told her mother's household about these things. Now, Rebecca had a brother named Laban, and he hurried out to meet the man at the spring. As soon as he had seen the nose ring and the bracelets on his sister's arm and had heard Rebecca tell what the man said to her, he went out to the man and found him standing by the camels near the spring. Come, you who are blessed by the Lord, he said. Why are you standing out there? I have prepared the house and a place for the camels. So the man went to the house and the camels were unloaded. Straw and powder were brought for the camels and water for him and his men to wash their feet. Then food was set before him. But he said, I will not eat until I have told you what I have to say. Then tell us, Laban said. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master abundantly and he has become wealthy. He has given him sheep cattle silver and gold men servants and maid servants and camels and donkeys my master's wife sarah has bore him a son in her old age and he has given him everything he owns and my master made me swear an oath and said you must not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the canyonites and though in whose land i live but to go to my father's family and to my own clan and get a wife for my son then I asked my master, what if the woman would not come back with me? He replied to the Lord before him, I have walked. We'll send his angels with you and make your journey a successful, a success so that you can get a wife for my son from his own clan and from my father's family. Then when you go to the, my clan, you will be released from my oath. Even if they refuse to give her to you, you will be released from my oath. When I came to the spring today, I said, O oh Lord God of my master Abraham, if you will, please grant success to the journey on which I have come. See, I am standing beside this spring. If a maiden comes out to draw water and I say to her, please let me drink a little water from your jar. And if she says to me, drink, and I'll draw water for your camels too. Let her be the one the Lord has chosen for my master's son. Before I finished praying in my heart, Rebecca came out. With her jar and her show on her shoulder, she went down to the spring and drew water. And I said to her, "Please give me a drink." She quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and said, "Drink, and I will water your camels too." So I drank, and she watered the camels also. I asked her, "Whose daughter are you?" She said, "The daughter of Bethuel, son of Nahor, whom Malachi bore to him." Then I put the ring in her nose and the bracelets on her arm, and I bowed down and worshipped the Lord. I praise the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who had led me on the right road to get the granddaughter of my master brother for his son. Now, if you will show kindness and faithfulness to my master, tell me, and if not, tell me so I may know which way to turn. Laban and Bethu, Bethu, yeah. Beth, Bethu answered, this is from the Lord. We can say nothing to you one way or the other. Here's Rebecca. Take her and go and let her become the wife of your master's son. And the Lord has, as the Lord has directed. When Abraham's servant heard what they said, he bowed down to the ground before the Lord. Then the servant brought out gold and silver jewelry and articles of clothing and gave them to Rebecca. He also gave costly gifts to her brother and her and her to her mother. When he then he and the men who were with him ate and drank and spent the night there. When they got up next morning, he said, "Send me on my way to my master." But her brother and her mother replied, "Let the girl remain with us ten days or so, then you may go." But he said to them, "Do not detain me now that the Lord has granted success to my journey. Send me on my way so I may go to my master." Then they said, let's call the girl and ask her about it. So they called Rebecca and asked her, will you go with this man? I will go, she said. So they sent their sister Rebecca on her way along with her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men.
and they blessed Rebecca and said to her, Our sister, may you increase to thousands upon thousands. May your offspring possess the gates of their enemies. Then Rebecca and her mates maids got ready and mounted their camels and went back with the man so the servant took rebecca and left now isaac had come from beer lehi roy for he was living in the give he went out to the field one evening to meditate and as he looked up he saw camels approaching rebecca also looked up and saw isaac she got down from a camel and asked the servant who is that man in the field coming to meet us he is my master and servant, answers. So she took her veil and covered herself. Then the servant told Isaac all he had done. Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother, Sarah, and he married Rebecca. So she became his wife and he loved her. And Isaac was confronted after his mother's death. Oh, I'm sorry. And Isaac was com comforted or comforted after his mother's death, okay? And that's basically all we had of chapter 24, uh, where Abraham's servant was being obedient to finding his only son by logic. Well, no, he did have another son, which was Ishmael, uh, but it was from a maid servant, Hagar. It wasn't from Sarah, who, you know, the mother was blessed to have a child at 90 some years old so let's not get that confused but he made it a point to honor the lord as well as his wife deceased wife sarah to get a wife for his son out of the same uh legacy or family background dynamics and culture of what he was and what his wife was not an alien type country he was living in such as the canaanites and how they um view religion and who they actually uh bowed down to so that was fitting everybody did what they were supposed to do and we are going to be moving on so it was obedience in that particular um chapter we were talking about and still marrying among their kind to make their lineage a little bit more stronger okay and to possess all that the lord said he was going to give um abraham's kin okay or offspring we would say in the bible so that was it hope you all enjoyed it any questions or concerns you know hopefully it's no concerns because we're reading and we're finding out ourselves about the bible and we're definitely praying for discernment when we read into a chapter and the verses uh if we're not understanding it, we ask for discernment because god knows you know we're gonna have to start doing and believing on a daily basis that the lord can talk to us just like he talked to priests um rabbis and any other uh preacher that can teach you the bible because you can also teach yourself and you know research and and find the meaning out for yourselves you don't necessarily have to go to church because i don't go to church anymore and it's more of a i see how the people that are supposed to be loving and kind and teach the word and preach the word for the lord they have come so wicked and they do things for themselves and the glorifying of themselves and uh, putting their own selves on pedestals to where I'm just really tired. And I want to continue to know the Lord and do what the Lord wants me to do. And still be able to be repentant and be humble in the same breath. Uh, and light of living where I, how I carry myself will make others want to follow the Lord. And be in that realm of reality. Um, so that's my confession. And um of not going to church and others may have their own reasoning but it's still no uh it doesn't have any foundation to why we won't give the lord our time whether we're in prayer all the time where we are uh, reading the bible or we're meditating give the lord some of your time so he knows you're there for him as you always want him there for you okay peace and blessings to you all and i'm gonna say good night um, and we'll pick up on the 25th chapter.
tomorrow, which will be on the 2nd of October. God bless you all. And to all a good night.